everybody. I am back here with one of my favorite people on the planet, Dr. Denisa Weber. What up, hey, what up, what up? Oh, my <laughs> girl. This, this woman and I, um, you know, kept circling up on stages, kept meeting up at different chiropractic schools that we were both teaching at. And um, I invited her to be here at our first big idea. And she brought such a message um, mm. to to what it means to be a mom and serve children in her chiropractic practice at Serving Life Chiropractic in Dallas, Texas. And, and she hit so many hearts. We brought her back again last year. And um, I've done a few other things with you. And, and why I invited her to be with us today is last year at The Big Idea and at The Remembering and at The Playground, one of the golden threads that you have shared, and I, I know you've got a little plaque even at your home that says yeah. it, but there's a one-liner that every time somebody hears it, oh, it just like sinks into the soul. Be where your feet are. Be where your feet are. And I've, I think I've quoted you in like five of my Facebook live rants lately. And, and so, so I just want to jump right in there and toss the ball your way. Can you tell anybody who, um, maybe it's their first time hearing it, or maybe it's, you know, just explain what you mean when you say be where your feet are. Yeah. Well, and it also is attributed to my husband. So um, he made this his quarterbacks, like in quarterback training, he's a football coach, but this was their um, kind of like motto for the year. And um, we just kind of made it a staple in our household because it just calls us to be present into wherever we're at. And while all the things that we could attribute to, you know, like um, my mom would always say like, make it a great day, like which mm -hmm. puts responsibility on you to execute and you create your day, right? Mm -hmm. Or create a great day and mm -hmm. be where your feet are makes and reminds us that it's not the external that dictates the internal. It is mm -hmm. us, it calls us to back, back to be grounded and says, in this moment where I'm at, what can I do with what I got? And, mm -hmm. and in a, in a world of ever changing all the things and the, even like all the emotions within a 24 hour period that I completely know and have experienced and even in this morning, even, and it's just mm -hmm. like, it, it's like constantly, okay, but where, but what, but what can I do now with where I'm at in this moment? What can I do? Um, be where your feet are. And so if it's with my kids, then I'm with my kids and I'm loving them, serving them, and I'm trying to speak life over them in a midst of complete and utter chaos. Or if it's with my husband, you know, and we're walking this out imperfectly, but it's a constant reminder and anchor in our lives that I like to share with other people because it just, it speaks to our souls. And I know that, again, like we can either be pulled by everything or we can be where our feet are. Mm -hmm. So it goes beyond um, a tagline, an affirmation, a motto, because it's like she just shared, sewn into your relationship, sewn into, you know, the the fabric of of the way you live your life. So it's it's who you be. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and so if I take that the next level as a healthcare practitioner, as a chiropractor who serves families, kids. Um, when, and we look at the context of 2020 and literally all of the things, right? If we, if we throw mm. Black Lives Matter, the virus, the mask, the options, the do's, the don'ts, the rights, the wrongs, and you imagine the eye of a hurricane, right? What, um, how mm. do you think that could change health? How do you think that could impact these decisions that people have to make for their health particularly mm -hmm. to be where, what, type, what does that type of anchor do for health? So um, as a reminder with the people that I serve in my practice, it's just constantly reminding them that, you know, we are the keepers of our soil. Like we, it's not the seed, it's the soil. And so, you know, and I even, the quote that I keep saying now, and just more of a question I'm posing to people in my office is, who are you going to be when you're exposed? Because at this, you know, if we're going for herd immunity and all that stuff, like, we're, who, who are you going to be? Like, what kind of person are you going to be? What is, what is your internal state? What is, what's, what are your, what's your immune system going to be like? What's your nervous, how adaptable are you going to be? Like, what are you doing 
to help strengthen yourself in this moment. Emotionally, are you de-stressing? Are you removing things that are stressing you the heck out? Are you, you know, what are you, what are you having? What are you feeding your soul with? What are you feeding your, your body with? What are you feeding? Like, how are you nurturing your actual physical body in mm -hmm. this moment that builds mm -hmm. over time? Because at the same time, like we can't be fearful of the small, the, all the little things like in, in the virus and the, and the this, and like we had riots in Dallas and I was packing up my practice. Like we didn't know what was going to happen. And it's just like, well, we'll just see what, we'll just do what we can with what we got. And, you know, God built this thing, but he can build it again. You know, like what, what have you like, but we want to serve people. I'm going to serve mm -hmm. them, whether it's on the street or I'm going to have a table out in the middle of a yard, or I'm going to do it in my office. Like, so it's just reminding people, like we're, we're trying to adapt to all the things and reminding them that you, you know, you are the keeper of what happens with you. Like, again, the, the responsibility is passed back. Whereas we, I mean, I, it's, it's easier to say, I want responsibility. I, I want to put my responsibility in somebody else's hands. Um, for me, that's terrifying. Like, I don't want anybody right. else to have any responsibility for me and my health. But in the, in the case of, well, you know, of an upbringing, society, society's upbringing has been, if you are not necessarily woken up a bit, um, right. is that your health is somebody else's responsibility. It's the pediatrician's responsibility. It's mm -hmm. your mama's responsibility. It's, you know, um, it's whoever's got the shots of responsibility. It's the, it's outside in, outside in, outside in when the, that's the biggest lie. And if I wanted to bring any truth to anything in this whole conversation is the lie is it's outside. The, the truth is that it's in. And the truth mm -hmm. is that you have responsibility within yourself and that everything that can work for you. When, when I read the Bible and it says you're beautifully and wonderfully made, I don't look at that as a physical representation. I look at it as you were equipped with everything you needed in order to adapt mm. to hit the environment in which God created you to be inside. And so if he's got a beautiful making of the earth and we're coming in and we're with animals and we're with all the things, we were built to adapt. And... Um, so you are beautifully and wonderfully made. Your immune system is be beautifully and wonderfully made. And it doesn't stop with face and skin and all the things. It is inside your guts. And it's your responsibility to take and take care of the temple in which you've built or he's built for you. Mike, drop. You can see why I love this woman so much. And it is... It it is a conversation. It's interesting that, that all of this has hit the way that it has when, you know, we've been in the conversation of health freedom and mandates for years, right. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in different ways. And so what we see is so many people are new to this table. And I, mm -hmm. I know in the words and in the passion of what she just shared, I know there were golden nuggets that I want you to go back and listen to that will hit you in different ways and serve you along the way, because how you do, here we go. We'll go another Weber quote that I love so much is how, how you, how you do one thing is how you do all things. And mm -hmm. what, what I hear her expressing. And when you get an anchor in your being and in your family, like be where your feet are, do the next right thing. It, it becomes very easy to answer questions. It becomes very easy to make decisions because you know who you are in your core and the rhythm and flow that you make these decisions from. Mm -hmm. Got to highlight what she said. It's in here. It's not out there. Now, I, w I mean, my final question with her was going to be like, what's the one fairy godmother gift that you could bop the world on the head and they could instantly have a healthier, happier expression of life? And you pegged it there, That's but it. Can, you drive, can you drive that home a little bit more for somebody that is in the process of waking up, right? Like mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. in the process of, of understanding what it means that the power's in here. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, it's on every single level, spiritually, mm -hmm. physically. Like, I mean, it's not without, it's within. Spirit mm -hmm. is within. Um, you know, if you go into spiritual realm, if you go into the physical realm, like, you know, you know any medical doctor will tell you and any doctor in general who studies physiology will say, the power source is the nervous system, like straight up. 
and immune system is heavily tied to the functioning of that power system. Mm -hmm. And I know like as a chiropractor, we're constantly nurturing and strengthening that system and making sure it has no interruption of signaling. It can communicate well with itself, strengthen the system, the system mm -hmm. and inner and create inner more interconnection within the system which yes. strengthens it. And so when it comes to health and when it comes to life in general, um, and when even like when we talk about when we go to these, um, me and Dev love self-improvement and we love like self-development and we love like learning from masters and all that kind of stuff. And every single master that we will go to will always say, it, it's nothing from outside. There's nothing outside that you can consume that that's going to make the success happen in your life. Like when we talk even about success in life, it is literally what is inside you is what's going to drive your success. And, mm -hmm. and, and if I look at every single facet from physiology to spirituality, to self-improvement, all of it, and it says arrows are going inside you've got something in there that's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's something that it, it um, scares other people, that people that want to control you. Um, that potential within you scares mm -hmm. other people. And unfortunately, there's not, not everyone is an amazing and good person <laughs> and has great motives. And I do believe there's more good in this world than there is evil um, and there's bad or what have you. But um, I, more people expressing their potential, what they've been purposed for in this life, whether it's their health, like in any facet, it is literally makes the world a better place because it helps other people. It increases love. It increases joy. It increases all the fruits of the spirit. Like you have to just look at them. And so like, even when you go into, if I go into dark, you know, play, like if I go down the rabbit hole and I look at things and I'm like, Oh my gosh, what is happening in this world? I know this is kind of pivoting off of, sorry. No, nope. um, keep going. But I like if for anyway, like, um, Lamentations is a book in the Bible and it's like lamenting this prophet is like, what the heck is going on? He's like, Oh, just Jeremiah is like, what the heck's going on? And so that when, anytime I start saying these things, I'm like, what, who's gone through this in this book? <laughs> like, you know, and you're like, you know, and it's just like, what in the world? And I'm like, it's just lamenting and just like this and why mm -hmm. this and why this, why this. And right in the middle of the book towards the end, there's a, I call it the pivot. And he goes, yet I call this to mind. Yet I call this to mind. And he says, and I will have hope. And mm -hmm. so that's like, as long as we can keep that fire burning of hope and potential in people and cast the vision for what is possible in people's lives, which is what I do inside my office, which is what I try to do with my children, which is what I try to do with my friendships. Like if we can cast the vision of possibility and create hope, even in parameters and even in all the things where it feels like restrictions, I dictate how free mm -hmm. this is. And it's inside mm -hmm. me that holds that space. And I can dictate whether there's hope or not. I can look, I can dictate whether I see hope in different situations or not, or if I see the bad. Um, but I know that that's going to dictate my internal state. So that's why I say everything is inside you um, and strengthening who you are and strengthening your physiology and strengthening yourself helps you combat. Men, I mean, this is a head game. All of this is a head game. All of it's a head game. All of it's all a of head it's, game. All of it's a head game. And and these conversations are so vitally important. And 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 from that fire, you can rest assured that this will be one of many conversations <laughs> that me and my my homie share over the next few months and years to come because it, it never ends. This is our journey here on planet earth to understand life and God and pursuit of happiness and peace. And, um, you know, it, one of my, one of my rocks right now is, um, I believe that the doctor of the future is the patient and it feeds off what you just shared in that, um, as long as people seek power out there, they'll never go looking for it in here. Mm -hmm. And as long as that rat race is run, we will miss the mark, so to speak. And we will um, be found wanting. But if we can spin ourselves inward, oh man. And so let us together cast 
that vision for that mm-hmm. world for our children and the children to come. So and then I you. love that. I love the when, mm. when you talk about the doctor, you know, being or what did you say? The, Do- the doctor the in the future is, mm-hmm, is, is the, the patient. patient. Mm-hmm. And that's again another like I, I love that quote. When you mm-hmm. say that, that's so powerful because then it reminds people that there's something inside them that's smarter than any any doctor out there in the universe. Like you think that the smartest of the people, like they got, they know everything that's happening inside you. If that is the tip of the iceberg, there is like Mm -hmm. not a medical library that has enough books to tell you what actually is, I mean, they're uncovering things as they go along. So what you were saying is a testament and to how powerful, like we could never know the doctor within. It, it, it feeds the idea of polarity and less than greater than, right? Mm-hmm. You, you know, that um, we are that. all perfect mm-hmm. expressions of, of light and potential, all of us, and, mm-hmm. um, and trusting into that space. And, and we'll go deeper with that, guys. And if you have any questions at all, if you are a chiropractor, a chiropractic student, um, definitely go follow this gal. She's opening her heart um, with the conversation lab, which just kicked off and is making big waves in chiropractic already. So if you missed it too bad, but I bet there'll be more coming. (laughs) Um, And, and so, you know, chiropractors, healthcare practitioners, light seekers, it is time to step forward and lead. And um, this beautiful woman is a demonstration of that. So Mm -hmm. thank you for your time and your heart and who you be and, and friends find ways today to be where your feet are and love Mm -hmm. every second of it. So I love you, girl. Love you.